50 feet is, is a little bit of an arbitrary number. It, it was based on some, some language that's currently being used on, on some DNR permitting. Let's face it, the, the program had to fit into the statewide plan. And so we all understood right off the bat that it wasn't going to be perfect. My mom, my dad, and us four brothers started farming here in Waltham, Minnesota, and been farming here since 1975. I've said in the past I have nothing against buffers. It's a good tool, but it's not a one-size-fits-all. One of the really important aspects of the success stories of the buffer law, I feel, is that when the alternative practices and the minimum average language came about, that's when landowners had an opportunity to have ownership in the decisions that they made on their farm. And by doing that, they could be a part of how the buffer law was going to be implemented on their land. What we find from working with our landowners is it's very personal, it's very much field by field. So a statewide plan is just too broad. And so we needed to focus down and we needed to be able to communicate this so we had buy-in from our landowners on why this was important. You had to show that there was a field by field basis. And to be honest, what we found in the end is that farmers want to protect their land and if they can buy in and believe that the practices that they're doing make a difference, we are able to get much more than the 50 feet in some of those very key areas. We saw that numerous times. Back in 85, when my dad put all these practices on that 150 acres, basically, he was doing it for soil erosion control. So we were kind of ahead of ourselves back then and we really didn't realize. Now, years later here, we're finding out that that's one of the best practices you can do for flooding and water retention too. That's where all the water basically collects. It collects in this basin here, and then it's filtered down through the tile, down to the creek, instead of sheeting across the top of the soil. And then there's another break down a ways. You can kind of see where the grass is tall, and then that goes into the second basin, just like this one. As the buffer law came about, one thing that we recognize is that there are some parts of the landscape that are more conducive to runoff than others. I thought it was really good and, and progressive of HEI to understand, looking forward, that you know, there was going to be a common sense approach to how we're going to address the, the buffer law and, and the issues around that. And so this alternative practices piece became a really big discussion item for us and became very relevant for all of our landowners. Jim's project is a, an ideal site where you take projects and practices that offset and mitigate and help tell the story to document. This is how things are being addressed to offset the runoff. And I just wanted to make that known. There's other alternative ways to combat the discharge and pollution going into these streams and creeks. And so that's why I guess I was adamant about telling our story on that farm because we had already more or less solved the problem that they were trying to solve with the buffer program.